the Joe Rogan experience. So how did it come up uh, that this was being labeled by the government as potential terrorists? Oh, Lord. Oh, man. Um, Because when I read that, I was like, this has got to be a mistake. Like, this has got to be just a misinterpretation of what what you guys are doing. Yeah. I So I will say this. When I thought I was being suppressed and then people were like, yeah, but, you know, it's just your analytics suck or whatever. I was like, yeah, it's probably that. You know, I was being optimistic about that. Well, when Kyle Serafin, the, have you heard that name? He's the FBI agent who leaked the documents of militant, violent extremists, MVEs, that were determined by the FBI of being people and groups of interest. Um, I knew it was a reality. This just recently happened. This is probably six months ago. This just got leaked. So uh, let's back up like a couple of years. When I started a group called American Contingency, the idea for that group was coming from um, the issues in Chaz. Remember Chaz? Like that little shit community. They basically blocked off a city block in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. A rapper mm-hmm. um, did that. And, and the police told the community, um, or I'm sorry, the police told, the police chief told the police through an email, we will not respond to calls in and around the area of Chaz unless it's a mass casualty event. So there were law-abiding citizens who were getting affected by politics, you know, coming down on law enforcement officers and telling them not to do their damn job. So when this kind of evolved, um, I said, I'm going to start a group called American Contingency where people can depend on each other. They could help people help, help each other out. So that kind of manifested itself into a group, a forum, and the FBI analyst um, that was doing open source, open source searches on intelligence discovered the group and determined that we were extremist and labeled us so. When he did that, he contacted Facebook. The FBI contacted all these social media platforms. My company account got shut down from Shopify. Shopify said, um, you have 48 hours to get your information and you're gone. So a multi-million dollar business, gone. No, no way to get it back, no way to contest it or fight it because I don't have millions of dollars and a lawyer to fight it. 48 hours to, to offboard it and it was gone. Um, the FBI also told Facebook, Facebook banned us on all the traffic. American contingency got banned and all the shit got shut down. Um, suppressed for years and thinking like, what the hell is going on? I had an insider in Facebook who just got laid off during the meta laid off. He actually, uh, four months ago, before he got laid off, I said, hey, can you look into American Contingency? Community-based group. A freaking group of good Americans helping each other in a time of crisis. Natural man, man-made disasters. I said, can you see if we can get our account back now that this thing's leaked and they've determined I'm not a domestic terrorist? They call me a, a white supremacist. <laughs> they, they, there's actually an article uh, on... Uh, on a leftist, uh, uh, wrote like a 20 page article on a leftist uh, uh, organization. It's like a dot org. USA Today published it. And when the national media picked it up, it spread like wildfire and everything got deleted. When that happened, I said, hey, is there a way that we could maybe get our stuff back? Because they're saying, we acknowledge it was a mistake. Um, the, these guys and this guy, Mike Glover, is not a terrorist. He looked into it. And got a response from the India team, from India, that was managing my account that said, we looked into it and he is a domestic terrorist. And we cannot free up this account because he's been labeled a domestic terrorist. How that got determined was likely from the FBI telling everybody, but it still exists today. I mean, today it still exists. And I'm so walking on eggshells. you today are listed as a domestic terrorist. A domestic, on Facebook, on which translates to Instagram, I am listed as a domestic terrorist. I have the screen grab from the, from that conversation from Team India. Ireland was managing my account when it originally got deleted. They offboarded to India, which obviously there's going to be cultural issues there. I am still labeled a domestic terrorist group with American contingency. And myself labeled that as well. 
Now, when they do this, do they have to point to any one specific thing that you guys are advocating? Like, how can they just say you're a domestic terrorist because you're telling people how to travel from Arizona to Canada and one tank of gas and how, you know, to treat wounds and how to deal with a one-on-one combat situation? Like, how, what, don't they have to have one thing they can point to? Well, Mike Glover said this, so this puts him in that category. There was some analysis done um, from Kyle Serafin, who, when he did this, he uh, he screen grabbed some stuff, and it looks like it was just this analyst said it. He was actually rebutted by some guys that I know in the FBI, likely hostage rescue guys that I work with overseas, like good dudes. I mean, the FBI hostage rescue teams are, are great guys, but it was likely told and communicated through some kind of agreement between Facebook and the FBI where they say, hey, here's the blacklist. And I can't prove this, but this is Kyle thinks the same thing. Here's the blacklist. Blacklist all these guys and all these organizations because they're potentially extremist. I mean, the three percenters, the Proud Boys, um, who we are not any of those, we are lumped up in the same exact list as that. And and it said it said these guys have a low history of violence, and I'm like, what the fuck does low history of violence mean? <laughs> like you, zero should be zero. It's low, but it's zero. Um, and and we even had proof. We had to submit proof of January 6th that we weren't involved at all. In fact, I went out and said, hey, as a organization, you should be concerned about taking care of your family defending your family, taking care of your family, stay the fuck away from uh, Washington, D.C. That is literally what we put out, and still that wasn't enough to get us off the list. It's that You have to prove that you weren't involved in January 6th. How nutty is that? Crazy. Instead of them showing, hey, you were involved in January 6th, you have to go out of your way to show that you weren't where something... like That could be the case with every fucking event that happens in the world. Prove that you weren't here. Prove that you weren't there. Well, a lot of the guys who were getting rolled up, they did, they were doing assessments of CCTV cameras and just using facial recognition to identify dudes and just go roll them up. And I never thought to ever go there because I, I, the, the whole thing was fucking dumb to me. But I'm like, dude, imagine if I showed up with with a correlation of, um hey, this guy's labeled a terrorist, he's on site, fuck, I'd be the commander of terrorists. I mean, that, that's enough fidelity to get me lined out and go, this dude's in prison. I mean, right. that would have been me. With your background, especially yeah. since they've already decided to label you. Yeah. That's, it's just so nuts to me that you have to prove that you weren't a part of something when there's no evidence that you were. Like, that, the, the burden being on you to prove that you weren't there is so crazy. They, the the guy who wrote this it's Googleable but if you like if you probably put in Mike Glover domestic terrorist a couple articles will will launch they had pictures of me and a whole bunch of people in Heber City Utah where my headquarters is at in those pictures we were doing community events raising money for charity and they were calling um, they said like Green Beret teaching militia all these different tactics. Dude, it was 20, it was actually impressive writing. It looked like AI wrote the shit, like chat, uh, that chat GPT, shit, GPT yeah. wrote it. Because it was so well structured that if you read it and you didn't know who the fuck I was, you'd be like, this dude's a terrorist. And dudes were blowing me up, like guys were hitting me up on Twitter. They're like, oh, this guy's a fucking terrorist. And I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, all I want to do is, I feel like I earned it. You know, I had the 20 years of service. If you ask me that, 10 years ago, I'd say, no, I'm still earning it. I feel like I earned it. I'm an entrepreneur running a business, trying to live my best life, and I want to be left the fuck alone, and now I'm being labeled a domestic terrorist by the same organizations I worked with and for. And no advocating whatsoever about trying to overthrow the government or attacking people or taking back your rights or storming the Capitol. Nothing, zero. zero. All of it, I've seen your shit. All of it is about being prepared for natural disasters, for the grid going down, something happening where you have to protect yourself or your family. That's That's it. it. That's it. And if anybody learned anything during the pandemic, they should have learned that we have a fairly fragile civilization. 
if the grid goes down, if a natural disaster happens, if something goes sideways, look, with a disease that kills a very small amount of people, shut the entire country down. And it wrecked the economy and fucked up a lot of people's lives. And we didn't learn from that. We didn't learn like, hey, you know, uh, maybe we should have some food stored. Maybe we should have some contingency plan. Maybe we should have a full tank of gas always when we park our car at night so we can get out of town. Maybe we should have, you know, firearms or, you know, fishing poles, like fucking something. Maybe we should have something. The idea that, that nobody can look at that, that people can't look at that and go, oh, this isn't domestic terrorism. This is just smart. This is just being prepared for disaster. This is being pe prepared for worst case scenario. The idea that being pe prepared for a bad case scenario makes you a terrorist is fucking nuts. That's, that's, really, that's really crazy. Yeah. It, it was a kick in the dick for sure. I mean, I... And that it could affect your business like that. They could shut you down. Yeah. When they shut me down, my merchant service account at the same time shut us down. And you can't fight that? You can't, can't say, it. like, what no. are you talking about? How are we a terrorist? No, but we, we tried to rebut it through emails, but they're like, nah, this shit, we're not going to, you can't do it. Um, you could do it with millions of dollars and a lot of litigation over the course of time, but you don't have the ability to do it, and we couldn't do it. We, I couldn't afford to do it. And they don't even have to have an example? No, no. The, no <sighs> recourse. And it's still, it's still... I mean, as far as I know from four months ago, Facebook, if like if you if you went in and you tried to type in AmericanContingency.com into Facebook or Instagram as an as a algorithm, it detects it and will shut it down. They delete my mom is an entrepreneur, um, uh, Korean Im immigrant. Uh, well, she's she married my dad when she was um, um, when my dad was stationed in the army in Korea, brought her over, started her business from shit from scratch. Like put a put a one uh, chair salon in our garage that was dirt garage, put concrete down and started that business from the ground up. Worked 20, 29 years at this point building this business, had a Facebook account with a few thousand followers in Fayetteville, North Carolina, at Miwa's Beauty Salon and Spa. They deleted it. They deleted her account because she reposted something um, from that account saying something like, I'm proud of my son. And they deleted her account because anybody who who uh, reposted the link immediately got their shit deleted with no explanation, completely deleted forever. When did this become a narrative? Like, when did being prepared? Because, you know, they used to have those prepper TV shows and a lot of them just seemed paranoid and some of them just seemed wise. Like, that some of them just seemed like, hey, it'd probably be a good idea to have some food laying around. Probably be a good idea to have a plan in case anything goes bad. Well, when did it become a narrative that someone who's preparing is a potential domestic terrorist? I think it's it was the onset of the COVID. Um, when COVID happened, we were talking about preparedness years prior to this. In November of 2019, after watching Bill Gates' documentary on basically COVID, um, I think it was on Netflix, and he was talking about pandemics and all the potential for mass catastrophe and loss in human populations. We talked about it. And it was a thing. Like we said, hey, like these are things you got to be prepared for. Look, our, our mission statement is we're, we want you to be best prepared. We don't care what walk of life you come from. Being prepared needs to be inclusive. I hate that fucking word, but it needs to be inclusive because... Disaster is an equal opportunist. It doesn't give a fuck who you are. It doesn't care what race, what wealth bracket you come from. It will hand you your ass. So our thing was, if you plan for the worst case scenario, by default, you're covering everything in between. So yeah, we use in, in, in our verbiage, worst case scenarios. But we're not trying to be doom and gloom because we're talking about practicalities. My guys teach self-defense. Uh, 2019 is the last statistic. 400, around 400 uh, justified shootings, f according to civilians. Not a high probability you're going to be in a fucking gunfight, but you should learn to defend yourself and your family with responsible firearms uh, ownership and gun handling. That That is not extreme. But when you sum it up and you say, we're a preparedness company, and who owns the preparedness company? A former CIA bootlicker, a fucking uh, a, uh, a Green Beret sniper, whatever the, the narrative is, then we fit the narrative for them. 
So you fit the 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 Bundy Ranch sort of 100%. militia. Yeah. Yeah. 